So guys, are you an obedient? Come, I have an update for you. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the tribunal sitting in Abuja, done the plan to remove Bola Ahmed Tinubu, which Bola Ahmed Tinubu have said that if the tribunal try to remove him as president of Nigeria, say he go cause katakata and wahala for Nigeria. And a lot of people they think say waiting Bola Ahmed Tinubu they talk, we be say he no clear them. Take a look at the video. Uh, to start a chaos is easy. But to be frank with you, this issue, where Bola Ahmed they follow the investors, where one can invest for Nigeria talk, say if they remove him for president in Gukos Wahala from Nigeria, because say he no meet the 25 percent where he's supposed to meet for Abuja, you know, say person where he's supposed to win the president now Peter Obi, because now he qualified to meet 25 percent where happen for Abuja. Vividly, I hope you never forget, say an APC man don't come out and confirm that they don't win the presidential election say now obedient now when the presidential election take a look at the video because you see what happened in the presidential election as you could see was that there was this wave you know uh, of obedience of young people that we all took for granted and we were thinking that p2b was a joke where will he go so both pdp and apc who were thinking no this man he doesn't have structures <laughs> He will not be able to do much and so on. So, but the people somehow, young people, seize the initiative from all the politicians. And for the first time, what we saw in Nasrawa, in several other places, in in Edo, <laughs> in Delta, where the vice president comes from, we saw that the young people were serious about what they were doing, and they took advantage of the social media, you know, to project a program that has shaken the nation. For me, we lost. We lost in the presidential election. We lost truly. APC, which is the incumbent government, lost more woefully than we did. Uh, who had the government, who have the party in the state, they all lost. So you can't use the presidential election to judge uh, what will happen. happen. We, we, we didn't win, but on the other hand, given our place in Nasarawa, we are not controlling government, we are not controlling federal government, but we did much better than APC in Nasarawa state. Welcome back. As I already tell you that victory is very important and victory is sacrosanct for those people who no say they win the 2023 general election. Tinobu don't they run from left and right katakata say they must not remove Amo as the president of Nigeria. How can a president, a sitting president, be telling those people where one can invest for Nigeria say if they remove him as president, it go cost katakata for Nigeria. What do you think about this statement and what do you think about the update? Where we say they happen for the, our tribunal they don't say if they don't win tribunal they must go to supreme court that means say they are hope they supreme court whether they think say then go win make you not be saying i mean they tell you this story take a look at the video congratulations to victory victory is victorious well all right let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the submission by president bola ahmed tinubu requesting the election tribunal to dismiss the petition seeking to nullify his election on the grounds that he did not secure 25% of lawful votes cast in the federal capital territory. The president, in his final written address against the two petitions filed by the candidates of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his counterpart of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubaka, warned that nullifying the February 25th elections on the grounds that he did not secure 25% of the lawful votes cast in the federal capital territory could lead to absurdity, chaos, anarchy, and alteration of the very intention of the legislature. Tinubu also stated that the two petitions seeking the nullification of his victory are not familiar with the country's electoral laws. Rufai, I'm coming to you, but let me take a Carlos tweet because this is actually the bone of contention because as you recall, our sister publication this day put out a tweet you know, with that statement and it's garnered more than 2.5 million comments. Well, Carlo wrote, the president of the largest economy in Africa is telling foreign investors that if the courts in a legal ruling in his own nation remove him from office because he failed to meet the conditions set by his nation to become president, there will be anarchy and chaos. In essence, if he is allowed to break the law and remain in office, in contravention of the legal rules of his nation against the oath of office he took 
There will be no chaos and anarchy. Over to you, Rufai. I'll, you know, I'll take... People became lawyers on Twitter yesterday, mm -hmm. giving their own different interpretation. Dr. Bati, I heard your interpretation this morning. Uh, Rufai. For me, it is the court, the Presidential Election Tribunal, that will rule on the interpretation of the 25%. Yes. Whatever they come out with, for or against, mm -hmm. I don't think interpretation of the laws of the country will cause any anarchy. Absolutely Let's stop not. Fanning the embers and everything. I know yeah. the, that statement was from the depositions of his lawyer, President Tinubu's lawyer, Wale Olani Pepu, because this they are having their final depositions in mm -hmm. before they make a judgment on it. It is for him to make his case. You can say he was making his case while he was arguing, but it is the court that will rule. And whatever the court rules, there's not going to be anarchy. I've heard a lot of people argue and said, oh, yes, the court, the court of public opinion and all of that, it reads the body and temperature of the nation. The law is the law. If it rules for or against, the law will reign supreme. And it's not happened before, blah, 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 blah. Those are just conversations. Because it is still the courts that will rule. All we can call on the judiciary to do is to stand tall. Across board. Yes, opinions are divided for and against and all of that. But we need to be able to build a country where the rule of law will stand tall. Because we don't do it for ourselves. We also do it for the way other countries see us. And when they see we have a weak judiciary system, what happens is that investors will not want to come. So the judiciary should also know that they are not only ruling based on the law now. They are also ruling based on what will become the outlook of Nigeria. So they will be the one to determine this 25%. We've never had a time where we've tested it. People can only make other inferences, like, you know, they've started a part of the constitution that says, oh, uh, treat it as, as long as, as though it's this, it's that, and all of that. You can have all the legal jargons. But it is when the court rules, conjunctively or disjunctively, you can look at the narrative. All we should now do is not to heat up the polity. Mm -hmm. Let us wait for the court to rule. And let's not also forget, after the court rules, there's also a Supreme Court there. Yes, absolutely. After this judgment, let us remember the fact that Nigeria will continue to exist. And Nigeria will continue to grow. But the question is, how do we see ourselves after things like this? That's what matters the most. Yes. And in building a country, it sees a collective work. Be all be it, the British coupled this country together in 1914. They started the process in 1906 after cobbling the Lagos colony and the Southern Protectorate. And 1914, they added the Northern Protectorate to it. You can see all of that. But the truth has to be said, Nigeria will continue to move. Absolutely. After this judgment, after the consequences of this judgment. Yeah. But all we should do is try as much as possible to deepen the rule of law and make fairness and justice be the order of the day. The court will rule based on the evidence in front of it, yeah. and it's already making its decisions. When it makes it, Nigerians will know. All right, Dr. Bata, I'd like your interpretation again in terms of what um, Tinubu's counsel wrote in that uh, um, final submission. Um, I understand that, you know, anarchy can be interpreted in different ways, but I'll just take one more tweet of people that were trying to clarify uh, Tinubu's win. This is from... Uh, Pastor Okezie, who wrote, Tinubu got 25% in 29 out of the 36 states and FCT. Atiku got 25% in 21 out of the 36 states and FCT. Peter Obi got 25% in 17 out of the 36 states and FCT. Nigeria has 37 subnational entities, 36 states and FCT. Only President Bola Ahmed Tinubu met this constitutional requirement 24 out of 36 states and FCT, and having the highest number of votes cast, he was declared winner and returned elected by the constitutional body, a.k.a. INEC. What is difficult to understand here? Dr. Abati. Okay, a number of clarifications. I think people must refrain from reading headlines and from headlines jumping into conclusions. That creates, it misleads a lot of people. Because uh, you see a headline in the newspaper, you see chaos, you see anarchy, you just conclude <laughs> and you start talking. Courts of law don't take their decisions on the basis of public opinion. You're right. Even if the judges themselves are members of citizens, they act on the basis of jurisdiction and the rule of law. And at the highest level, the Supreme Court has its own original jurisdiction. And the courts exist also as modulators, as stabilizing forces, you know, even as they discharge. Uh, their functions under the uh, Constitution. That's number 
Two. Number three is that, look, the principle in law is that you must hear the arguments from all parties to a, a matter. In this particular case, you have the uh, PDP going to court with uh, Waziri Atiku Abubakar. You have the Labour Party going to court with uh, Mr. Peter B. And if we just collapse what they were asking for, they're saying that Section 134 2B must be read to mean the reference to the Federal Capital Territory means that the, whoever will become president must cut 25% in the Federal Capital Territory. And that Tinubu having not obtained up to 25% is not qualified to be president. Now, he got 19% in the uh, Federal Capital Territory. Two, they said that the matter in the U.S. District Court, you know, that he had been indicted or convicted, whatever, and because of that, he should be disqualified. Three, one of the issues they raised was about uh, Shetima, his running mate, who they said was a dual candidate, having, you know, been chosen as a senatorial candidate in his home state of Borono. Those were the basic three issues. So they gave their, you know, uh, they fired their defense, they uh, called their witnesses, total of 14 in law. And the court gave counsel to uh, uh, Tinubu and the APC to submit their written address within 10 days. And that's precisely what, you know, uh, Wale Olani Pekun, who is lead counsel to the uh, APC and Tinubu group, did. And he just took all those issues raised by, you know, the two major, the, the petitioners, you know, one by one, and he debunked them. I tried to give a summary earlier on. He said, for example, Section 1342B, you know, cannot be read disjunctively, that it must be read conjunctively. Because to do otherwise is to misinterpret and misrepresent the intention of the framers of the Constitution. A basic principle is what is the intention of the lawmaker, the framers of the law? What do they intend to say? It's for the court to decide on that. And Olani Kwekun was saying, you know, uh, provided his own uh, defense, citing Section 31, which lists 36 states, Section 299, which recognizes uh, the federal capital territory as if it is a 37 state, and also Section 66 of the Electoral Act. And he said, a community reading, that is what it is called, a community reading of all these provisions will prove the point that you cannot say because somebody lost in there, uh, uh, didn't get 25% in FCT, then it cannot be president. And it provided precedence. The law, precedence, you know, stare decisis is called. It's a major issue in law. Our law versus Shagari. Buhari's case. Ibrahim Adesan versus, he, he, he gave all of that. Number two, he said the case of the petitioners is based on IREV and BVAS, electronic transmission. He said no. That's, that's, that can't stand. Because in any case, the law, you know, provides for manual transmission. And that you cannot say because of electronic transmission is an issue. Number three, he says the case that they are referring to in the U.S., that the evidence that is provided is inadmissible because it's not, you know, uh, 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 documented within our own jurisdiction here. Yeah? And that in any case, nowhere in that ruling is the word fine used. So he, he took on all of these issues, you know, and then concluded that the uh, application, the petitions amount to a crass abuse of court uh, process, and that you know it should be dismissed, it should be disregarded, and that in any case, is confident that the job of the court, right, is to ensure peace, not to cause chaos, not to cause anarchy, and that given precedents that he has cited and all of that, it will amount to you know causing chaos and anarchy. But people have taken that in a literal sense. Yeah, so he to mean a said, threat. Right. But it's not a threat. Right. So people should go to the uh, written address and read it and understand the context. Instead of just saying, oh, Tinubu wants to cause chaos. He wants to cause anarchy. So basically, that's the, not the, what the is job in the... of the judiciary is not to cause anarchy, correct? That's really the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, not, not to, right. not to uh, you right. know, uh, uh, add more tension to, to the environment. And, right. uh, you need to see the context in which you use that Absolutely. phrase. And I don't agree with those people who think that it's a threat. A, 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 a counsel you know, before the court of law, cannot go in front of their lawsuits and threaten them. That is, that is unacceptable. Well, all right. 
Welcome back guys, now can you see what I'm really talking about? What do you really think if Tinubu finally lose this election and they declare Peter Obi as the winner of the 2023 general election? What will be the outcome of the tribunal that is boiling as I'm telling you? Don't forget that when Tinubu became the president, he started doing some things and a lot of people were rejoicing with what Tinubu is doing presently. But unfortunately, we never forget that you cannot come inside through the back door and you don't expect people to challenge the victory that you claim. As the tribunal is eating Bola Ahmed Tinubu now, we can see that he's feeling the heat and very soon there may be tribunal may remove him as the president of Nigeria and declare Peter Obi as the winner of the election. This is just a quick update that I have for you to show you that Peter Obi is the winner of the presidential election. We just conclude 2023. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to share the video to other people out there. Give your comments in the comment section below. Let's hear from you. It's your boy Hola of My Media TV and I'm gonna see you in another video. Peace out.